Well, my destination is kind of almost done. But I get the sense. I felt like there's a force field and I cannot get in the church. I think it's to keep the demons away and it's gonna bounce me off. Watch. I think I made it in to the church force field. Let me lay down. This feels so Fall is here. Soon, winter is coming. And snow will begin. Alright, today we're on the holy ground of God. Now I'm gonna enter it. Wait for me, Dean Sam. I'm here. Welcome to God's throne. So, you're in heaven now. So, what did you do? How can you help you? So you decided to play God. Now, I disagree with you shouldn't interfere with people's lives. What are you, what are entrepreneurs are doing? They're interfering people's lives. Or interview, intervening people's lives. That's an act of God. You decided to play God when you try to change people's lives. Right? So, entrepreneurs. Authors, leaders. When people, when spiritual people say you shouldn't intervene in people's life or they're their own journey, I disagree. My whole life, strangers always helped me. How was my family? When we were poor, when we had, when strangers gave us clothes when we didn't have that much. When, uh, my, uh, me, uh, my sister and I, we went shopping for our family for food, and there was this stranger, uh, this lady, a black lady. She took us home when we were a kid uh, uh, because it was the grocery shopping was so hard, uh, so heavy. And I uh, remember there was this teacher back in, uh, uh, what was it called, kindergarten, elementary school. And he saw that we needed a ride, and he took us home. In all my life, strangers had to help me. The therapists entered my life, people entered my life. If those people didn't come into my life, my life would not have changed. So that's an act of God. You're changing people's life by intervening. The moment that you decided to play God, that is the, you decided that you have something to offer to the world. That you have a message that people need to hear. Because you have gone through something that they're going through now. Or they used, that used to be that. So you decided that, you know what? People are worth saving. That because of the spirit within me, I gave them my energy, my life force. Because God wanted me to. Right? Have you ever played God? Have you ever... The moment that you were building a, build, um, a business to coaching life coaches, you're playing God. You're trying to change people's life. That's playing God. And I disagree because people can change people. People can shift people because by being there, it's an act of God. You don't know where people will go, but you decided anyway to play God. So you are God by the things that you do do, the act of service. The, no matter how hard days you uh, go through, the pain, the suffering, the sadness like I have, but you still care, right? At the end of the day, you still do the things that you do because for people, because you know that people are worth saving, because you know deep inside of you that you care enough to do it. Otherwise, you would not have done it. I remember back in the day, there was uh, a game, whyeat.com, and there was a game about God, and then did you create things, because it's like a God hand, it's about creation and destruction. The moment that you play God, 
the moment you decide that you, who live or who dies. But it's not about that. It's about you deciding that you are you decided to play God, that you want people to live. That's what you're trying to do. That's what motivational speakers, uh, entrepreneurs try to do. They're trying to play God, save humanity. Right? Think about that for a second. I guess that's why my spirit within me lead me here today. I was going to do it in my room, but I waited for you had this thing. You have to wait for a while, and then you have to act on it. The spirit within me knows that this message must be heard. So today, I will give you my mind and my thoughts. And that no matter what you go through in life, that there are always worth people worth saving and changing people's lives because you know how it felt, the pain, the suffering. But there's also this joy that go with it. Because when you help other people, it fill you up, don't it? It fill you up and you're on fire. So, today, I decided to play God. It's an act of God. I see you in heaven. The day you die is when you change people's life forever. Oh. Well, I'm in church now. There's another room in there. Wow. This is huge. There's Jesus. I'm in church. Well, last night, I had something in my mind brought it up, and I was like, church. So I went to church. It's an idea. Well, there's another room that people are in, and this is a church. Uh, I haven't been in this church. Or I haven't been in church for a long time. Well, maybe 2013. Jehovah Witness. Jesus. Um, last night when I was falling asleep, I had an image, an idea. Like, it popped up and said, go to church. So, this church. Or something. I don't know. I was going around. I thought the uh, other one, the building was a church. But this one. It's great. Imagine. Oh, look at this. Stand today. Oh. I hope that today you will have a great day, and that this is gonna be my. Imagine a thousand people. I want to do that. So if you're having a rough day, life. Life is hard, you know. And we have a rough day and have a day like I do and that we can get back up again and then it's not easy but we can keep living and Thank you so much, uh, Father Ryan. Um, so, what do you believe, uh, like, w you talk about priests are almost like uh, leaders, right? Yeah. And um, why do you want to become a leader for, like, the church or the priest? Well, because um, I believe that God called me to do this, hmm. to do this, to become a priest. And I find joy and satisfaction right. and, and peace in in being a priest, you know, right. and leading the people to worship. So, that's one of the reasons uh, why I decided to become a priest. Right. Yeah. Do you, sorry, do you believe that there is something that I cannot explain that, like, some force, it's like, sometimes, um, help you, like, God, you, you believe, like you said, you know, you it's have God, a call. Yeah. <laughs> we call him God. <laughs> <laughs> So we call him God. God does it for us. Okay? Do 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 you like? Do you get like message from him, or how do you? Well, it's not um, explicit message that you you hear. I mean, that's not how some people receive those um, revelation. But in our case, like we pray, and when we pray deep in our heart, deep in our hearts, we hear the voice of God. You know, in our hearts. So it's not like physical voice. And in the church, we believe that 
the more you study the scripture, the Bible, the word of God, the more you get acquainted to what God is telling us. So then you pray. So you just spend quiet time with God. Hmm. And through reflections, you you actually understand what He wants you to do. But it's not like a radio or a television where you hear an actual voice. Right. It happened to few, a few people, but it's not the norm. Right. Those are the exceptions. Right. And But, but the thing is what you say is like, you feel in your heart, mm -hmm. right? It's... It, I, I felt like God, it's like he planted a seed in our heart. Yeah, he planted, yeah, that's good. Yeah, and like every time, because I felt like every time I follow my heart, something good happened. Even though I have a rough day or mm -hmm. bad day, like most people do sometimes, right? But he guided me into, or whatever spirit. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, what God does. How, how do you feel when you have bad days? What do you do? Do you tap into the power of God? or? Yeah, of course. You always ask God to help you. Because, I mean, bad days are part of our lives. We're... We're all humans, so we have um, we make choices, and people make choices, and some of those choices we don't like. So they're going to be bad days. So we just have to accept the fact that this part are part of our days, and then we ask God to help us. I ask God to help me, just get through it, and then just hope that next day will be better. Right. Do you do you believe in the afterlife? Like, of course, that's what we believe. <laughs> as, as we know that um, life here on Earth is not permanent. Right. You know, there's after this life, there's the eternal life with God. Hmm. I never heard that before. Like, how? Because I felt like there is like after you like because you know many people are afraid of death. I used to yeah. be uh, afraid of death, right? And I was like, I was so freaked out by that. Because I so, so yeah, yeah. If you don't believe in afterlife, then death will be scary. Yeah, right. Just, um, and again, like um, Jesus promised that he will come back again, and Jesus believed. Jesus said that there's the resurrection, and if you believe in him, there there will be resurrection of the dead, and there will be eternal life with God. But it's a choice to make too. Like hmm. you have to choose hmm. to be with God or not with God. So you're saying that we as people have the power to choose to live our life or not? Oh yeah, we have the freedom. That's what God gave us. He gave us the freedom to accept God or to reject God. Hmm. That's why if you accept God, then um, you will... Of course, there are things you have to do. If you accept God, then you you accept Him as your Savior and Redeemer. Then you live by the commandments and you you agree that you will do this because of a relationship. And... And with that relationship comes the assurance that you will be with God eternally. So you're saying that God is always within us? Or yeah, is, God is always within us. I feel like people always look at God.